the endocrine system, otherwise referred to as the hormonal system. The endocrine system is all to do with those endocrine glands and the hormones which they produce and secrete. You now know that endocrine glands produce and secrete hormones. However, there is another type of gland known as an exocrine gland. What exactly is the difference? Well, exocrine glands release or secrete their products into tubes or ducts. Whereas endocrine glands, they secrete hormones directly into the blood. There's no ducts, no tubes. Endocrine glands make hormones. Hormones are chemical messengers produced by endocrine glands. They travel in the blood to some other part of the body where they have a specific effect. Hormones are protein in nature. However, there are steroid based hormones too. Whenever you mention a particular hormone, always say where it's made, where it goes and what effect it has. Let's now compare the endocrine system versus our nervous system. I imagine the nervous system to be the equivalent of instant messaging using an app like Snappy Chatty and I imagine the endocrine system as receiving a letter in the post from the postman, snail mail. So snail mail is the hormonal system and Snappy Chatty is going to be the nervous system. The endocrine system deals with chemical messengers known as hormones, whereas the nervous system deals with electrical impulses. The endocrine system transfers those chemical messengers, those hormones, in the blood, whereas the nervous system transfers those electrical impulses via neurons. Hormones are slow to reach their target, just like snail mail, whereas nervous impulses are much faster, they're almost instantaneous. The hormonal effect is long lasting. However, the effect of nervous impulses are short lived. Let's go through each of those endocrine glands and the hormones which they make. A very tiny gland located in the brain is the pineal gland. It produces the hormone melatonin. Melatonin is responsible for controlling or setting the circadian rhythm known as your body clock. For example, melatonin levels will increase when light decreases. This is why you feel sleepy when darkness falls. The hypothalamus is the next endocrine gland, also located in the brain. It produces that hormone antidiuretic hormone, ADH. ADH will then be sent to the pituitary gland. ADH will then be secreted by the pituitary gland. It will travel in the blood to the kidneys, where it acts upon the distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct of every nephron, making them more permeable to water, resulting in more water being reabsorbed. The pituitary gland is probably the most important of the endocrine glands. It's often referred to as the master gland. It's basically like the conductor in the orchestra. Hormones which the pituitary gland secretes regulate the production of other hormones, many of them. The pituitary gland makes growth hormone. This stimulates bone growth and protein production. A benign tumour of the pituitary gland can result in overproduction of growth hormone and this can lead to gigantism. The pituitary gland secretes antidiuretic hormone, but it's not made by the pituitary gland, it's made by the hypothalamus. Remember, it's the one that goes to the nephron. Follicle stimulating hormone is also produced by the pituitary gland. It travels in the blood to the ovaries where it's responsible for stimulating egg development and the egg gets surrounded by the graphene follicle. The pituitary gland also produces luteinizing hormone which again travels in the blood to the ovaries where a surge in luteinizing hormone on day 14 brings about ovulation. Prolactin is also produced by the pituitary gland and this stimulates milk production. The pituitary gland also produces growth hormone and this causes growth. The pituitary gland also makes thyroid stimulating hormone which travels to the thyroid gland where it stimulates the production of thyroxine. Next we have the thyroid gland which is located in your neck and it's shaped a bit like a butterfly. The thyroid gland makes and secretes thyroxine and thyroxine is responsible for regulating your metabolism. Thyroxine is made when iodine and that amino acid known as thyrosine combine together. Deficiency in thyroxine is very serious. It results in cretinism in infants. This is where there is impaired mental and physical development. It's the reason why babies are given the heel prick test shortly after birth. If the heel prick test shows that there is a lack of thyroxine, the only solution is to administer thyroxine. 
When an adult is deficient in thyroxine, they gain weight, they have fatigue, sometimes have swelling of the thyroid gland known as goithra. This is where there's not enough iodine to make the hormone and so thyroid stimulation hormone just builds up in the thyroid gland. This condition is known as myxedema. Treatment involves either taking thyroxine or iodine tablets. Overproduction of thyroxine or too much thyroxine results in anxiety, weight loss, increased metabolic rate, bulging eyes. This is known as Graves' disease. One way to remember Graves' disease and to give you a laugh as well is to watch Dad's Army on YouTube and check out Fraser. He's the Scottish guy that's always really anxious and negative and he goes around saying we're doomed all the time and if you're doomed and marooned you're going to the grave. So what's the treatment for too much or overproduction of thyroxine? Well, you can surgically remove part of the thyroid gland or you can eliminate it using radioactive iodine. On the back of the thyroid gland are four smaller glands known as the parathyroids and they secrete parathormone. Parathormone stimulates the osteoclast, a particular type of bone cell, to release calcium into the blood plasma. Then we have the thymus gland located in the thoracic cavity. It produces thymosine, which causes those T lymphocytes to mature. Then we have the pancreas, and the pancreas has both exocrine and endocrine functions. The endocrine function of the pancreas first. Cells known as the islets of Langerhans, they produce insulin. Insulin travels in your blood to all your cells, where it basically unlocks them and allows glucose to enter, so reducing blood glucose levels. The pancreas also has an exocrine function where it makes those digestive enzymes, amylases, lipases and proteases and secretes them into the pancreatic duct. Next up you have your adrenal glands. There are two of them, one sitting above each kidney. They produce adrenaline known as epinephrine and they also secrete it. Adrenaline is responsible for your fight or flight responses. Then we have the ovaries which produce oestrogen, that hormone which is responsible for those secondary sexual characteristics. The testes produce testosterone, that hormone that's responsible for the secondary sexual characteristics in males. Now we'll discuss negative feedback where the level of one hormone will either switch on or switch off the production of another. And we'll use thyroxine as our example. It's the hormone produced by the thyroid gland. When thyroxine levels are low, this causes your pituitary gland to produce and secrete thyroid stimulating hormone and it will travel to your thyroid gland. Thyroid stimulating hormone causes thyroxine to be produced and until such time as thyroxine levels rise again, thyroid stimulating hormone will continue to be produced by the pituitary gland. When there are high levels of thyroxine, this inhibits or stops the production and secretion of thyroid stimulating hormone in the pituitary gland. You could be asked in your exam to give an account of a hormonal response to when body temperature drops. You could write about thyroid stimulating hormone being produced by the pituitary gland to increase thyroxine production. And when thyroxine levels rise, so too does metabolic rate and this will generate heat, raising body temperature. And I'm sure you can all tell me that negative feedback featured in hormonal control of the menstrual cycle. So you have oestrogen inhibiting follicle stimulating hormone and progesterone inhibiting luteinizing hormone all by negative feedback. You are also required to discuss two hormonal supplements and the first of which is anabolic steroids. These are usually taken to aid recovery after sports injuries so they help you build up muscle. Misuse of anabolic steroids puts you at serious risk of organ failure. The second hormone supplement is insulin. It's needed to treat diabetes and it's used to reduce your blood sugar levels. Insulin is protein based, therefore it needs to be injected. Why? Because it would not be able to survive those proteases found in your digestive system. That was the endocrine system. I think now is a good time to go back and revise human reproduction. There are so many hormones in that chapter and also examples of negative feedback. Go back and find them. Best of luck. Please note that the professional looking pictures, the black and white, are all icons from the Noun Project. I'm a pro member, but I want to give a heads up to all the artists.